All right, welcome to part eight of Let's Play Mass Effect. Um, Looking for supplies? Hopefully there will be some action, but we have a lot of codex and dialogue to go through. I don't have to do it all at Let's once, but it. um, there's a lot. Ooh, better armor. Medium, medium better than, it's better than even the heavy we have on. All right, we're, we're not gonna buy anything though. It's just kinda, let's, let's codex. Biotics is the ability of rare, in an artificial intelligence is a self-aware computing system capable of learning and independent decision-making. Creation of a conscious AI requires adaptive code, a slow, expensive education, and a specialized quantum computer called a blue box. An AI cannot be transmitted across a communication channel or computer network. Without its blue box, an AI is no more than data files. Loading these files into a new blue box will create a new personality, as variations in the quantum hardware and runtime results create unpredictable variations. The Geth serve as a cautionary tale against the dangers of rogue AI. And in Citadel space, they are technically illegal. Advocacy groups argue, however, that an AI is a living conscious entity, deserving the same rights as organics. They argue that continued use of the term artificial is institutionalized racism on the part of organic life. The term synthetic is considered the politically correct alternative. So are all the dialogue breaks between the major missions? So if I do minor missions, I can still talk to my crew in between them. Faster than light drive, larger warships are generally classified in one of four weights. Frigates are small, fast ships used for... So I could just slowly dribble the um, crew Frigates dialogue out in between minor flotillas. missions. Cruisers are middleweight combatants, faster than dreadnoughts, and more heavily armed than frigates. Cruisers are the standard patrol unit, and often lead frigate flotillas. Dreadnoughts yes. are kilometer-long capital ships mounting heavy, long-range firepower. They are only deployed for the most vital missions. Carriers are dreadnought-sized vessels that also carry large numbers of fighters. Smaller vessels are almost exclusively used in a support role to the warships during combat. Fighters yeah. are one-man we'll craft we'll let this used to perform close-range attacks on enemy ships. Interceptors are one-man craft optimized for destroying opposing fighters. Because if I do all the dialogue that's opened up for my characters, it might take up the entire episode, is, is my thinking. But um, if I do minor missions and maybe come to each one after e each mission, then it kind of spreads it out. The Normandy and we can have some action as well. Starship, developed by the Human Systems Alliance with the assistance of the Citadel Council. It is optimized for scouting and reconnaissance missions in unstable regions using state-of-the-art stealth technology. For most ships, the heat generated through standard operations is easily detectable against the absolute zero background of space. The Normandy, however, is able to Action temporarily sense this heat yeah. within the hull. <laughs> Combined with refrigeration of the exterior hull, the ship can travel undetected for hours or drift passively for days of covert observation. This is not without risk. The stored heat must eventually be radiated or it will build to levels capable of cooking the crew alive. Another component of the stealth system is the Normandy's revolutionary Tantalus Drive, a Mass Effect core twice the standard size. The Tantalus Drive generates mass concentrations that the Normandy falls into, allowing it to move without the use of heat-emitting thrusters. Now, the more I was waiting for, the reading of the Mako. The Mako Infantry Fighting Vehicle was designed for the System Alliance's frigates. Though the interior is cramped, an M35 is small enough to be carried in the cargo bay and easily deployed on virtually any world. With its turreted 155mm mass accelerator and coaxially mounted machine gun, the Mako can provide a fire team with weapons support as well as mobility. 
Since Alliance Marines may be required to fight on any world, the Mako is environmentally sealed and equipped with microthrusters for use on low-gravity planetoids. The Mako is powered by a sealed hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell and includes a small element zero core. While not large enough to nullify the vehicle's mass, the core can reduce it enough to be safely airdropped. When used in conjunction with thrusters, it also allows the Mako to extricate itself from difficult terrain. There's a lot of um, secondary codex here as well. I don't actually want to read this, so I'll just kind of put it in view so it can be read from the recordings or watched if people do actually care to read this stuff. My thinking is if I actually bothered to read this it would take hours. I think there's a primary entry on the general page as well. I'd, I'd be surprised if there wasn't. Queries are coming to take our gerbs. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's the only thing I got out of that, that, that entry. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of lore. And a lot of this just kind of reiterates stuff you've been told in dialogue as well. Like the stuff about the Admiralty Board, like Taliardi in dialogue told us about this. I'm surprised that I have a had this readable already, but I guess it came up in dialogue when I actually talked to Tally. Just a couple more primary entries to the do. Citadel is an ancient de Citadel space is an unofficial term referring to any region of space controlled by a species that acknowledges the authority of the Citadel Council. At first glance, it appears this territory encompasses most of the galaxy. In reality, however, less than 1% of the stars have been explored. Even Mass Effect FTL Drive is slow relative to the volume of the galaxy. Empty space and systems without suitable drive discharge sites are barriers to exploration. Only the mass relays allow ships to jump hundreds of light years in an instant, the key to expanding across an otherwise impassable galaxy. Whenever a new relay is activated, the destination system is rapidly developed. From that hub, FTL drive is used to expand to nearby star clusters. 
The result is a number of densely developed clusters, thinly spread across the vast expanse of space, connected by the mass relay network. Emo only? What, what, is, what is that? I don't even know what that is. In the early 2160s, the Alliance began aggressive colonization of worlds in the Skillian Verge, much to the dismay of the Batarians, who had been developing the region for several decades. In 2171, the Batarians petitioned the Council to declare the Verge a zone of Batarian interest. The Council refused, however, declaring unsettled worlds in the region open to human colonization. We're clicking things. In protest, the Batarians closed their Citadel embassy and severed official diplomatic relations with the Council, effectively becoming a rogue state. They instigated a proxy war in the Verge by funneling money and weapons to criminal organizations urging them to strike at human colonies. Hostilities peaked with the Skillian Blitz of 21. I think you're actually my only actor on the human user the with moderator power in my channel. And slavers. In 2178, the Alliance retaliated with a crushing assault on the moon of Torfin, long used as a staging base by Batarian-backed criminals. In the aftermath, the Batarians retreated into their own systems and are now rarely seen in Citadel space. The Volus are a member species. Um, I'm guessing the Batarians were the were the new race. Uh, yeah, it must be in the chat settings. Yeah, there's an emote and a subscriber only mode. Whole bunch of options I've never used. All right, let's talk to Garrus. How are you? Why did you want to be a C-Sec officer in the first place? Hmm. That's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Such as? Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, I wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it too. He was C-Sec, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. Can I understand yeah. that? But you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a C-Sec man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger for the same reasons. You were asked to be a Spectre. Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power, no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. I see. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. But Saren's not going to play by our rules. C-Sex rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. Not true, necessarily. Just because you can break the rules doesn't mean you should. I don't need to stoop to Saren's level to stop him. And neither do you, Garrus. I see what you mean, but... I'll think about it. Thanks, Commander. Commander, good to see you. Uh, yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of explore the rest of this system. Thinking there might be, you know, like a, um, a planet or two we will actually be able to explore and then we can see how much time we have left on the, um, the back end of things. Galactic map. Because, yeah, we have Macadon and um, I forget the last one's called. Message coming in. Patching it through. Commander Shepard, my name is Nasana Dantius. I have a job for you. I can't say anymore in an unsecured communication. 
If you're interested in hearing my offer, meet me on the Citadel so we can talk in person. I'll be waiting in the Diplomat's Lounge on the Presidium. Survey of Metal Rich Asteroid has titanium. Now Nisana wants to talk to me. Hydrogen helium gas giant with an abundance of airborne hydrocarbons. Big planet. A large concentration of Xenon. Second of the Macadon system's giant terrestrial planets are by far the most interesting. Most surface is covered by a vast sea of liquid ammonia, which is a unique aquatic ammonia-based biosphere, in which a unique aquatic ammonia-based biosphere is developed. The frozen continents are largely bereft of life. A rich bounty of complex organisms, many larger than a human, flourish in the chilly, toxic seas. While dreadfully inhospitable to humans, Padavig is suitable for colonization by the Volus. In negotiations between the Systems Alliance and the Volus patrons, the Turian hierarchy have made good progress. It's a cold, cold planet. With a ridiculous amount of pressure and a lot of gravity. Coralon is an enormous terrestrial planet, half again the size of Earth. Despite its thick atmosphere, the weak output of the red dwarf Mesodon leaves its surface biting cold. The crust is mainly composed of silica, but significant deposits of iron and other industrial metals are present. These loads may prove rich enough to be properly mined despite the heavy gravity. Matriarch's writing is discovered. Matriarch Delinga's writings in a storage compartment. All right. Shargilla is a planet we can land on. Planets in the system are part of any side missions, are they? That, like, I've yet to pick up, I mean. Because I am curious about that. Um, Tally and Liara, why not? Except Squad. Are, the planet, are any of the planets in this system? Not sure. Sniper rifles. Okay. What planet is this? I assume if there is something, then... Sir, Sir Jilla.
visiting the planet before a mission wouldn't screw things up, would it? Uh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This might be why she contacted me. All right. We have to go talk to Nasana first. We probably don't don't have to have to, but um I assume like even though I don't officially oh You don't have to. I mean, I'm going to for the sake of, um, because I assume it might potentially affect our rewards. For, you know, doing, doing the thing. It won't take me very long to... Asteroid Cluster Survey. Prothean Data Disk. Alright. I'm just going to finish surveying this area. Small terrestrial trace atmosphere of methane and argon surface composed of water, ice, and calcium with occasional deposits of light metals. Different dialogue. Oh, Twitch, is Twitch issues have spiked. Which probably explains why my stream is suddenly dropping a ton of frames. During the Alliance's pirate suppression campaign in the 2160s, the Batarian Ulum Ranpera was caught with his f frigate Tunran grounded on Al Saji's for drive discharge. When challenged by the cruiser Hyderabad, Ranpera refused to surrender. The Turanon was destroyed, attempting to take off. The debris is thrown across the southern hemisphere. I'm assuming... Okay, we found plutonium. Who wants to create some nukes? <laughs> Order Mal Malka. Large hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of chlorine and sulfur in the atmosphere. Gotta make those pools. This massive gravity well tugs many asteroids from the outer belt inward past the orbit of Altaya and Adolis and eventually settle into the inner belt. Anamalka's orbit is congested with hundreds of captured moons, most last only a few thousand years before being ejected, dragged down into the atmosphere, or ripped apart by tidal forces out of the gas giants and mud springs. Attempting to navigate this chaotic environment is hazardous at best. Ships without military grade kinetic barriers are likely to suffer catastrophic impacts. Ooh, hydrogen. Yeah, no atmosphere. Cold as hell planet. Altea is the unusually large terrestrial world with a trace atmosphere of methane and ammonia. Surface is frozen and mainly composed of sandstone and other sedimentary rocks with deposits of iron and chlorides. Judging by the sedimentary composition of the crust, it appears that Altair once possessed an atmosphere thick enough to support some form of liquid. What cataclysm struck the atmosphere and left the planet to freeze is not currently known. Zoom out. Commander, I'm picking up a signal from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. 
Ooh, we have a couple of planets to land on. Shura Man Ray is a dwarf planet composed of light magnesium silicates with deposits of aluminum. Its surface is covered by wide swaths of ancient dark basaltic lava, possibly indicating the world was created through an impact with some other body in the system. Shura Man Ray's magnetic field is non-existent. This makes it impossible for ships to dump drive charge from orbit. That said, Tremani's minuscule gravity allows even cruiser-sized vessels to land safely for direct grounding. Alright, so we have two planets to land on. We're going to talk to Nisan, Nisana to figure out what she wants. And then we'll come back out and land on these planets and see what's going on in them. Heat load monitor. Give me that experience. Did I sign Liara's points? I did not. Just kind of messing about. Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. Rear Admiral Mihailovic, Fifth Fleet. This is a surprise. We weren't told to expect you, sir. I would have prepared a formal greeting. Spare me the pleasantries. I command the 63rd Scout Flotilla. You and the Normandy were slated for my unit after shakedown. Then the Council got their paws, claws, tentacles, whatever. They got them on our ship and you. I think it is an opportunity. I still serve the Alliance, sir. As a Spectre, I can advance our interests to the Council. Huh. You still know what color your blood is, Shepard? I don't begrudge the politician's decision to throw you to the Council. It's an opportunity. I do begrudge this over-designed piece of tin, though. The Normandy is a fine ship, sir. She's served us well so far. It's a gimmick, Commander. Useless in a stand-up fight. This experiment diverted billions from our appropriations bills for the same price we could have had a heavy cruiser. But no, we had to make nice to the Turians, throw money at a co-developed boondoggle. I'm here to make an inspection, Commander. Normandy is an Alliance warship. I intend to see she's up to snuff. Please do. We'd be honored to show her to you, Admiral. I'll just bet. Wait here. I won't be long. Yeah, you're a prick. Commander, I'm not happy. Sorry. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Who designed that CIC? Putting the commander aft of everyone else is inefficient. What if he needs to discuss with the operators toward the bow? Modified Turian style. They prefer commanders looking over their subordinates rather than in the middle of them. We wanted to see how effectively they can command with that setup. Hmm. Reasonable goal, but they should have studied that in a lab rather than on a frontline warship. I had to shake my head at that drive core of yours. 120 billion credits of element zero to make this thing able to move without giving itself away. You realize we could make drive cores for 12,000 fighters with that money? What good is it to hide for a few hours anyway? Useless. 
We can loiter in an enemy system and monitor traffic, or drop infiltration teams on enemy worlds. Normandy could be more effective than the Solarian STG. Maybe, maybe. But that's not the job of a proper warship. We're supposed to find and kill the enemy fleet, not count how many times their garrison goes to the bathroom. And we need to talk about your crew, Commander. Krogan? Asari? Turians? What are you thinking, Commander? The funny thing is, I technically don't answer to him anymore. Between Saren and the Geth, we have enough enemies out here. Treating other species with suspicion and distrust won't win hearts and minds. That assumes the hearts and minds are worth winning. That hasn't been proven yet. You have anything else to say, Commander? Any other justifications for the state of this vessel? Mm, no. None, sir. Very well. I don't agree with any of this, but your reasons seem sound. I'll be submitting a report to the Joint Military Council. It will not be as negative as I planned. Good hunting, Commander Shepard. Make us proud. Um. Yeah, our charm wasn't just simply wasn't high enough. In a further development in the Eden Prime investigation, the Council has reportedly revoked the Spectre status of one of its operatives. While the unnamed operative has not yet been apprehended, a council spokesman confirmed that corrective actions had been taken. Commander Shepard? Kalisa bin Sin and Al Jalani, Westerman News. Would you answer a few questions for our viewers? What do you want to know? You've been given a unique position to represent our race. People want to get a sense of how you'll do that. Humans have been trying to get the respect of the galactic community for 26 years. With that in mind, what are your feelings on being the first human specter? The specters represent the best of every species in the galaxy. To be asked to join them is an honor. Some have said your appointment is the Citadel throwing humans a bone. Have you encountered any situations where the Citadel asked you to place its needs before the needs of Earth? The Council is concerned with the needs of the whole galactic community. We're part of that community now. Our needs are on their agenda, but we're one of many. You really do believe that, don't you? You've been given command of an advanced human warship for your missions. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? Actually, the Normandy was co-developed by human and Turian engineers. Its design incorporates many innovations, all of which are classified, I'm afraid. So the Turians have knowledge of the Normandy that is being kept secret from the Alliance public? Do you think it was appropriate to hand Earth's most advanced warship over to the Citadel? I wasn't aware it had been handed over to anyone. I'm in command, and last I checked, I'm human. Same goes for my crew. Human, yes, but you do work for the Citadel now, Commander. One last question, Commander. Rumors back home say you're tracking a rogue specter named Saren. Do you have any comment on that? A punch. I've had enough of your snide insinuations. <laughs> you bitch! I'll make sure everyone in the Alliance sees that. Your career is over! Uh, probably not, actually. Oh, we got renegade points. In light of the recent attack on Eden Prime, many colonial investors are pulling their support for future projects. Proponents of expanded human colonization insist that Eden Prime was an isolated case. Nevertheless, colonist enrollment has dropped sharply. Many colonial proposals are on hold until backers have some reassurance that human colonies will be adequately protected. I think the Alliance considers even talking about Saren a negative, so... Hmm, if punching her is negative too, then, you know, who cares? Embassy Lounge!
funny how I was being diplomatic up to that moment. I'm like, take this punch. You're asking for classified data, punch. Commander Shepard, I am Nasana Dantius. Now you want to talk. I see you got my message. It sounded like you needed some help. I do. My sister Dahlia is a crewman on a cargo vessel operating out beyond the fringes of the Traverse. Her ship was attacked by privateers. There were no reported survivors. I'm sorry for your loss. This is where it gets complicated. Last week, I received a message with her voice on it. Dahlia is alive. The rest of the crew was killed, but she was taken prisoner. The slavers demanded a huge ransom from me in exchange for returning her unharmed. Uh, okay, why was she Why didn't spared? the raiders kill Dahlia along with everyone else? My sister probably told them who she was. My family's very wealthy, Shepard. They must have realized she was worth more to them alive. Coming up with the ransom seems like the best way to ensure Dahlia's safety. That's what I thought. I did what they wanted. Transferred the funds to the account they specified. Only they never released her. They haven't contacted me since. I've made a terrible mistake, Shepard. I'm a diplomatic emissary. By law, I'm required to report any attempted extortion to CSEC immediately. But I was afraid for Dahlia, so I just paid the ransom. Now she's still missing. And if anyone finds out what I did, I could end up in jail. You want me to find her and bring her back? You only need to bring her back. I've already found her for you. I tracked the ransom payment through several accounts. Eventually, it led to a small mercenary band operating out of the Artemis Tau Cluster. I need you to go to the Merc base, take them out, and bring my sister back. You shall be well rewarded. Alright. Um... Anything you can tell me about the mercs who have your sister? Pretty much what you'd expect. Rough, dangerous, and well-armed. Nothing a specter cannot handle, though. I'll be right back. Why me? Can't you hire someone else to do this? I do not want to take chances with my sister's life. I need a specter. Besides, you operate outside official channels. My superiors cannot find out I never reported the ransom in the first place. How'd you find out who was behind the ransom? I have resources. Contacts and credits can go a long way. Especially if you're willing to bend the rules. I already broke the law when I paid the ransom. This couldn't make things any worse. Don't worry. I'll bring your sister back. Thank you, Shepard. I knew you were the right woman for the job. Come back and see me when the job is done. I think there's more. There's like more side missions for us to do now. But we'll come back for a, uh, a proper go through on that at a different time. Um, yeah, we get down here. Exogeny Corp is still denying reports that one of their survey teams has gone missing in the Hades Gamma Cluster. When asked why communication with the survey team was suddenly cut off last week, company officials refused to comment. God, my frame loss is insane. I don't think there's anything I can do about it. I think Twitch is just... With all this exploration of Prothean culture, this must be like a survey for you, Liara. Our travels now are somewhat different from my normal excavations. I would prefer lengthier studies and fewer explosions. Yes, most of the technology I had hoped to bring back to the flotilla has subsequently attempted to kill us. Let me see what's going on. Yeah, the Twitch stuff is 
trying to resolve, I think. But yeah, we're just losing, we're just losing frames. Stand by uh, the, the, the encoder is not progress. the problem. Logged. The commanding officer is aboard. Exo Presley stands relieved. The recording will be unaffected by this, fortunately. Message coming in. Patching it through. Commander, Miss Algelani's story on you just aired. The brass isn't happy with the way you treated her. This comes straight from the Joint Military Command. She was distorting my words. Sir, she was going to make me look bad no matter what I said. Well, there were better ways to handle it than knocking her on her ass. As satisfying as it was to see. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know what the response was back home. I won't keep you any longer. Fifth Fleet out. Officially, you fucked up. Unofficially, we enjoyed watching. <laughs> All right, let's go back. We're going to Macadon, and I don't think this will take very long. This is just a quick, um, it's just a quick little land and... land and do stuff mission. Or Shajila. We're lit. I will apologize for the state of the stream, but I don't think there's anything I can actually do about it. Perpetually in like red on the bit rate for some reason. Oh, now it's well, it was green for like a second. My guess is that the connection just isn't stable. And now I say that, it looks like it actually finally stabilized. Sorry, capsule, give me.
And we're back into the red. <laughs> oh, that's kind of funny. Uh. All right, we're going in. Uh, a couple points. What do I want to do? Unlock fitness, why not? Sniper. You must die. Time for revenge. Revenge. Now it gets fun. Oh. You're not going to snipe me from that close. Fuel tank. I'm gonna guess that uh, shooting that is not a good thing. Suicidal. Right, 
there's nothing here. Just, just stop. Hard decryption. Should probably pop a quick save in case I screw this up. You discover evidence that the Asari leading these slavers and the son of Danius, an important ambassador on the Citadel, are sisters. You should return to the Presidium and confront Nasana about this. Download evidence. Take off. We should, and we're going to. Just, uh, it's going to be a little bit later. Oh. There's a cranny we haven't investigated. Run! Or have we? Post is that just a teaser there? That's just teasing, teasing us by being there. Because I don't see a way to reach it. A hammer five. That's going to be a better sniper rifle than what we currently have. I guess we could have uh, done that during the battle. Yeah, I don't see a way to actually reach. Unless there's a button for climbing that I'm not aware of. Jumping, climbing. But I don't see anything like that. Jump jets, space bar. But that's in the uh, Mako. Okay. Return to Normandy. Bunch of new Kodak stuff. No jump, no climb as far as I know. I think in later games climbing does become a thing.
Commander, do you have a minute? I'm listening. I always make time for my officers. Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The Council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. It's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. Well, well. You're a romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Malenko? Secure a man's future in space? <laughs> yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid, where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves, or, you know, for justice. Now, maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Vought. Tell right. me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform. Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. There were other kids in the same bus. That's true. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Then you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bowl every night after dinner. Or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich, but she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful, but not stuck on the planet. Like you, I guess. Well, did you love her? Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same. Things never felt together. Training, you know. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the bits. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. I wanted to get to know you a little better. That's all. Thanks for the talk, Caden. Well, you're welcome, ma'am. Make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? What do you think? No, no I don't. We'll talk again later. I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that, Computer. But 
Yeah, I'd like that. Save. We're going to call it a day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you haven't have not already done so, feel free to hit the follow button one time, or sub like and share. Um, on if you're on YouTube. Till next time. Take care. Have a great one. Have a great weekend, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We'll see you guys again next time. Till then, later on. <laughs>